Um, I'd like to introduce you all to uh, Graham Armfield, who is the ex accessibility guy. That's how he'd like to be uh, self-titled. <laughs> and, um, uh, and accessibility, obviously, is a big deal. It's 20% of um, web users um, are affected in some way. And um, I'd like to hand over to Graham. And it's a 30-minute talk and then 10 minutes question. Thank you. Hey! Anyway, as you can see, my talk is called Accessible Audience for WordPress, an introduction to ARIA. Um, for, before I start, a little bit about me. I know my fan base is down at the front here. Um, <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a web accessibility consultant, and my day job means that um, I help people improve the web accessibility of their websites. And I do that by testing websites for accessibility. I also um, help primarily developers, but it's also content authors and designers as well, um, solve accessibility issues with their websites. Um, I've written... <laughs> I'll carry on, because my voice is quite loud, so you should hear me. Um, like, uh, yeah, so I, um, I, I've written a training course, which I do for various clients. Um, and hopefully one day I'll be able to offer uh, the developer training course more widely and working towards that. I'm also a WordPress developer. I've developed, oh good, it's got a nice bit of reverb going on now. I've developed um, accessible uh, WordPress websites and I'm a member, a part-time member of the Make WordPress Accessibility team, of which there are other members here. And uh, is that echo all right? It's ever so um, echoey. Okay, right, let's get going. Um, so. Accordions, we all know what they are, and they're not hard, are they? Um, many JavaScript libraries have got accordion patterns in them, for example, jQuery UI. Uh, and there's also plugins which uh, will help you do uh, accessible accordions, and that's an example of one there that's actually quite good. So, what's this presentation all about? You know, what do I, you know why are we here then? Okay. So do we know that those accessible patterns in jQuery UI and the, ones, the other ones that are available, do, they, do we know that they're truly accessible if they claim to be so? And do we know, and this is the most important bit, how the accessibility bit works? And so what I'm going to do in this presentation is I've taken accordions as an example and I'm going to go through the HTML and JavaScript techniques to build a simple accordion but what I'm going to do is a basic introduction to ARIA to make, help you understand how you make such JavaScript interaction accessible to people using assistive technologies. That is specifically people using screen readers who may or probably be blind and also people using voice recognition software if they're motor impaired and they use voice commands to uh, action their machine. So. Um, now, there's a lot of JavaScript around in WordPress these days, and there's probably going to be more. So the more JavaScript that there is, uh, the more ARIA is going to become important as we go forwards. It's useful for other interactive elements too. I'm going to talk about uh, accordions, but it's also tab panels, modals, light boxes, etc., etc., etc. All of these elements are very likely to need some ARIA to actually make them work and usable for everybody. So, our target with this very brief little project is, this is the requirements, our target is to make them our accordions that make sense and can be used by people using a mouse, people using touch devices, people who choose to or have to use the keyboard only, who can't use a mouse, uh, people using a screen reader, I mentioned typically blind people, uh, that's on desktop or mobile, uh, these are two uh, desktop uh, screen readers. I'm hoping to, if I've got time at the end, to quickly demonstrate what we've built using NVDA, which is a popular screen reader. And also Dragon, naturally speaking, which you might use if you're motor impaired. Then these switches, these are more complex, very custom built for people um, with more severe motor impairments. Typically, they might use their elbow to control these or their neck or their leg muscles or whatever in some ways. Think Stephen Hawking, you know? Um, these are things that you know, are very customized for people, but typically they emulate keystrokes, and that's why keyboard interactivity is very important to get right for accessibility. 
So, our desired interaction pattern. This is the interaction design requirements. Okay, so I've got, I'm, I'm thinking, um, the, here, the accordions is kind of like a frequently asked questions page. So you've got a series of questions and then you've got a panel that shows you the answer and everything like that. So our accordion questions, I want to click on them and that will open and close the panels. I want to tab between those questions. If I'm using the keyboard, so if I tab around the page, it'll go from one question to the next to the next. If, I, if I'm using the keyboard, I want to use the enter or the space key to actually action those so that it opens or closes the panel. And when I've opened the, or the closed the panel, I want focus to go into the panel, and you'll see why that is important later on um, for screen readers. Also, if I'm closing the panel, then I want to make sure that focus stays on the actual question itself. Also, I'm going to add in some up, down, left and right arrow keys. Uh, this is because there's more than one way of doing a lot of these accessibility models, and some people like to use the up and down arrow keys for using um, accessibility. Uh, for accordion groups and also tab panels and stuff like that as well. So that's our requirement for interaction. And here is our starting point. Um, a very, very simple HTML. Um, this is, um, um, all this, this is just what we're going to start with. We're going to start customizing that. And it's good for SEO to start with just that simple uh, thing because when Google visits your site, it's not going to be running JavaScript necessarily. And so your HTML with the questions and everything like that will help with the SEO of your site. And it's progressive enhancement because we're actually going to use JavaScript to amplify what's there and improve what's there to actually turn that into uh, an accordion. Um, in the past, screen readers didn't interact with JavaScript very well. And I'm talking 10 years ago now. Um, these days, you don't have to worry about that. All screen readers can cope with JavaScript. That's on mobile as well. And um, so that's not usually a problem. OK, so the very first thing we're going to do uh, is to, in our HTML, is add a container. Now, I've given it a class of ACK group. You can give it a uh, whatever class you want. We, that's important that that goes there because we're going to do more with this later and it's to enclose all your accordions, however many you've got, whether it's two or 20. Okay, the very next thing we're going to do is maybe add some other classes, one onto our heading and some on, we're going to put the answer in a panel because after all we want to hide and show this so it's sensible to put it into some kind of div or something to hide and show it and there's our content again. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay the framework. And this, we're still in the simple HTML stage at this point. We're, I'm going to put a data ID of one, data ID of two, et cetera, et cetera, on this. This is going to drive our JavaScript adding IDs and stuff later on. So how do we get this code into WordPress then? Um, the options are we might have a custom post type that is frequently asked questions. I've done this on a client's website in the past, and then we do a custom query and we output the, the HTML in using PHP functions to actually do that. And so we can put the, uh, the required format into our HTML then. I've also done this for customers as well. I know some people aren't happy with short codes, but some of our, my clients actually quite like them. And so I've got an ACK group short code and then some, the questions and the answers in it. And of course you can do, if you want to, put the code directly into the editor. You know, how you do that is up to you, basically. So the rest of the story is all about JavaScript. And I'm not going to go massively into the JavaScript. I've used jQuery for my example. There are other libraries out there, and there are other ways of doing it. But typically, you might find items like this in your query. So I'm finding all the accessibility question, the accordion questions and I'm going to set everything up in this routine here. OK, um, that's OK. But you'll remember that our simple HTML featured a heading and a panel. Now, headings don't normally get focused by default. So we're going to need to make sure that they do so that I can use my keyboard to interact with them. They also don't normally get events. Um, so we're going to have to cater for that too, because um, if I, if I want to click on that heading or if I want to tab to it and then use the enter key, I'm going to have to do some special um, processing for that. And it's, this is important for when I'm using voice recognition software as well. So I'm going to add some attributes into the headings um, and to do this. 
Right. Now, focus management in accessibility when you've got JavaScript, whatever you're doing, whether it's like stuff like this, tab panels, single page apps too, you know, focus management is really important. You always need to have direct control over where, where focus on the page is. If you don't, it can sometimes get lost. And anyone who relies on the focus, like for example, keyboard users uh, or screen reader users, it can just get lost at the top of the page. So it's really important that you keep a tight control over that. And so I'm gonna use two special tab index values you may or may not have seen before. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do on the headings is to put a tab index of zero. And what that does, it actually makes the headings become part of the tab order of the page. Um, it doesn't influence the order. The order that they are in the tab order of the page is determined by their co the order in the content. So that lets them get focus. The other thing I'm gonna do is put a tab index of minus one on the panels. Now I mentioned in our interaction design specification that when I open the tab panel, I want focus to go on to the panel, and that's what I'm, why I'm using this. Tab index of minus one means that something is not part of the tab order of the page, but it allows me to actually put focus onto it. On, it's usually on, obviously on elements that wouldn't normally get focus. Uh, in this case, it's a div. Um, you need to do this for Chrome and Safari. If it was just Firefox and just Internet Explorer, remember those days, um, I wouldn't have to do this. But because of Chrome and Safari, if you don't do this, then focus will not get successfully transferred onto elements that wouldn't normally get focus. Right, what am I going to say here? Okay. Right, so I've said when the tab or header is actioned, I move focus into the panel. In your JavaScript library, you want to be careful about this. When you're in your focus management, if you're ever going to move focus, you will need to make sure that that element fully exists in the DOM first. Um, this is especially true for screen readers. Screen readers kind of sit in a layer above the browser, and they are responsive to any changes in the DOM, like hiding and showing or adding extra content in, but they don't always get the news as quickly as we might on Twitter or something like that, you know? It, it, there can be a bit of a delay, and you're gonna have to test this out. So you need to avoid doing things like this, which you can do in jQuery, all right? So I'm showing it, and I'm, I'm putting the focus on it immediately, because sometimes, especially if you've got some animation going on in there, then the thing won't fully exist before you try and give it focus. And so it's like it falls down between the floorboards, basically. So do something like that, or even if you find, you know, and you need to, you'll need to test this out, you can test this using a keyboard um, yourself, consider adding a few milliseconds delay before you put focus onto the element. I mean, a few milliseconds, you know, five or 10, no one's gonna notice that, basically. So we're gonna add our tab index in now. Notice it's on the heading, and also the tab index of minus one on the div itself. I'm only showing just one of the question and answer bits from now on, otherwise the slides would get too cluttered. The other thing I've done is I've given IDs to the actual header there, that's ACK Q1, and the actual panel, ACK A1, and that's driven, in my case, from the data IDs I've put there already, okay? Now, when accessibility and with ARIA, IDs become very important because you're often going to be referring to other things on the screen from where you are now. And the ID is the way to do that. And of course, we all know in our HTML specifications that if I use the ID attribute, they've got to be unique within a page, right? And so we need to make sure that's correct. Okay, the screen reader experience. So I've touched on a bit of this already. When the page loads, screen readers know about it. If the page changes after the page loads, you can't rely on the fact that screen readers know that it's there. The DOM gets updated quite quickly for them, but your screen reader user is generally only focused on one part of the page. If something changes over here or over here or whatever like that, they're not gonna know about it. So you need to make sure they're informed of what's going on. It didn't used to be the case that screen readers got an updated DOM at all. So interactivity 10 years ago doing this, it was, a, well, it was very difficult to get it to work right, see? <laughs> okay, native functionality. 
Now, we all know that native HTML elements have their own set of default interactions. All browsers and assistive technologies can deal with that fine. And they also carry the necessary properties so that screen readers can tie into that, right? An example is a checkbox. Here's some things you might have on your pizza. Um, the checkbox describes what it is, that it's a checkbox, and also using the label, which is associated with it, it will tell you what it represents. It will also tell you, and via a screen reader as well, whether or not it's selected. However, we're not, what we're doing here is, and with a lot of other acti interactive components, we're using our basic um, blocks, Lego bricks if you will, to build something else, right? That extends the native functionality of what we're using, the components we're using. There is no native HTML component for an accordion, so we're building it from other things. And this is where ARIA comes to the rescue, to help us glue it all together. ARIA, it stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. It's a bit of a clumsy acronym, but there you go. Um, it's a series of attributes, basically. Most of them have an ARIA prefix, not all of them. There are three main types of ARIA attributes, roles, and these describe what an element is for, what it does effectively, or what it should do. Um, properties describe the features of this element and how it relates to other elements on the page. And then we've got states, and that's where what I am doing at the moment, whether I'm selected, hidden, checked, etc., etc., etc. So we're going to use these ARIA attributes in my little model, and I'll explain what they are as we go through. Okay, so here is the very first one. I'm going to, I've take, this is the container that I made you add earlier, and I'm going to give it a role of tab list, and I'll explain why in a minute. And then the heading, I'm going to give it a role of tab, and the, tab, and the actual sort of panel where the answer is has a role of tab panel, and that's where the content sits. But hold on a moment, we're doing an accordion here, aren't we? Not a tab panel. But actually, if you think about it, accordions and tab panels, especially from a perspective of someone who's blind, actually work in a very, very similar way. You've got a series of items that effectively toggle something else, that toggle a panel of some sort elsewhere. And so the functionality is actually very similar, with the main difference that with, typically with accordions, you can have multiple panels open at once, and with tab panels, usually one of them's open when you look first load the page. But other than that, they actually function in a very similar way. The same is also true of carousels, if you think about it, but I'm not gonna go any further into that. That was part three, which I hadn't got time for. <laughs> so that's why they share the same ARIA roles, and so that's why it looks as though they've got tab panel ARIA roles, um, ARIA attributes, um, when actually it's, a, it's a, an accordion. Okay, so now let's get started. The very first one we do, notice our container again, and that's another reason why it's really important to have that, ARIA multi-selectable. What that is telling a screen reader and a voice recognition software, like Dragon Naturally Speaking, is that, and because it, it's, it's assigned with the role of tab list, so this is telling me it's a list of items that behave a bit like a tab panel, and it tells me that I can have more than one selected at once. So this is much more down the route of uh, an accordion rather than a tab panel. If it was a tab panel, ARIA multi-selectable typically would be false. Now, in my heading, because remember, if I click on the heading or action it with the keyboard, I want this to open something else. So we give it this here, this ARIA controls, and this is telling the browser and the AT, I control something else. I actually am in charge of some other thing on this page. And it's also the ID is in there. So it says ARIA controls equal, and then I've put the ID of the element that I'm controlling, which is the actual div where the answer is. And there's a kind of a reverse relationship going on here. ARIA labeled by, and I've put the ID of the question. So it's kind of like a two-way thing. This is saying I, I rule that, and this thing is here. Is This thing up here defines what I am. And there's my content again. Okay, uh, what else have we got? Oh yeah, the states. This is where you, you, it tells the screen reader or the other assistive technology where we are at at the moment. So there's two here. 
ARIA selected on my heading says, much as you would imagine, this is whether or not I'm selected at the moment. And it's the initial state, because I've loaded the page, none of my accordions are open, the initial state is false. ARIA expanded equals false. This refers to the thing that I control. So this is telling the screen reader user that the thing I'm controlling is currently not expanded. And the other one here that I've added now is on the actual panel, which is probably hidden using a display none uh, in your style sheet, but just belt and braces, I'm using the ARIA hidden attribute, which tells the screen reader or assistive technology that to, to ignore this, basically. So this, out, this is where, what it looks like with my content in when the panel is closed. If I then click on it or otherwise action it, I'm now going to open it. All that's happened is that I've changed the ARIA selected value to true, ARIA expanded also true because I've opened the panel and now ARIA hidden is set to false. And I think we're there. So in your jQuery library, it's dead easy. All you're doing is just manipulating, you know, you're doing some setup of attributes and then you're manipulating whether a panel's visible, you're, you're changing the ARIA and then you're moving the focus as appropriate. So this is obviously how you would put a click on the heading thing, that's easy enough. And then you've got key down, because the heading wouldn't normally receive uh, any, any events, you need to actually specify key down events as well. And you need to listen to which key is pressed. You either use, if it's an enter or a space, then you should hide and show the tab panel. If it's a down arrow or the right out, out arrow, you want to transfer to the tab on to the next one. Uh, within the group, that is. If it's up arrow or left arrow, then it moves focus upwards to the previous one within the accordion group, if there is one. And so that's it. What I'm now going to do, very briefly, is to demo a model, the one I created earlier, um, so you can actually see it working. And the first thing I'm going to do is put my headphones on, because I've got Dragon Naturally Speaking running. And you can see up there is an icon at the top, right at the very top, and I'll fire it up in a minute. It's, uh, now, Dragon, naturally speaking, um, I've got the latest version here, and it works better with Internet Explorer than anything else. Um, but firstly, before I get into that, what I'm going to briefly show you is what my accordion page looks like if there's no JavaScript enabled, OK? It's just headings and answers. I've got a panel here that is the one where JavaScript's enabled. And as you can tell, I, the design for this cost me a lot of money. I wanted something nice and clear, and there I got this. So I'm starting at the top of the page, I think, and I'm now pressing the tab key. Okay, so I'm, these are still headings, remember? So I've got a link there, it's got, this has got focus, etc. I'm also now going to use the up and down arrow keys to move between them. And when I'm sitting on one, I'm going to press the enter key and it opens. And I've got a focus indicator going around that as well, just to help me know that that's got focus. And when I do shift tab, focus goes back onto the heading, and I press enter, and it closes it up again. OK, so it's fully keyboard accessible. Obviously, I'm not going to show you how it works with a mouse, because you'll have to assume that that works like that. Now, I'm going to get Dragon involved in this. So wake up. Wake up. Sometimes with Dragon, it gets a bit sensitive because I had trained it with my voice, and when I'm sitting in my office at home, I talk quite calm and everything like that. When I'm in a gig like this, I can get quite excited. It changes the timbre of my voice, and sometimes it doesn't, be <laughs> it doesn't behave itself. So let's try it again. Naughty Dragon. Okay, wake up. Please work. work wake up. Uh, yes, actually, you're very right. I haven't switched the microphone on. <laughs> Bonus to that person over there. <laughs> okay. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Yes, right. I've switched the microphone off temporarily now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue a command. Now, Dragon, loads of commands. Not going to see all of them because uh, it 
it would take a whole presentation in itself to show you how this works. But suffice to say, I can actually influence these very easily, um, I, and I'll show you that now. Wake up. Wake up. Yes. Click newsletters. Click newsletters. Click frequency. Click unsubscribe. Go to sleep. Now notice that I didn't say the full text. The dragon's clever, very clever. All I needed to say was what was, um, you know, sufficient in sufficient detail to actually decide. If I actually something, say something that's in in ambiguous, dragon actually will help me, and I'll just briefly show you that. Wake up. Click how do I. Notice these numbers, it's got one and two. They're very small for you, those of you at the back, but it's got, there are more than one things that are actionable on the page that say, how do I? And so it's given me a one and a two, and now I do choose two. And it actions that one. It's very clever, isn't it? Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Thank you. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> and that... <laughs> That is, the, uh, that is the end of my dragon, naturally speaking, demo. Um, I'm just going to close it down, please. Because I'm now going to fire up NVDA, which is a screen reader. It's not the only screen reader you can get, but it's a, it's a good one. Right, OK, dragon actually thinks stopped working. That's kind of what I wanted. Right, OK, let's get rid of that. Now, have I got Firefox running? Here we go. Now, um, whereas Dragon, naturally speaking, works best with Internet Explorer, Firefox works, works best with Firefox. And so I've moved across to Firefox here. I've got the same thing going here. Um, that's the non-JavaScript version. We're onto the JavaScript version here, and I'll just get NVDA running. Hopefully the sound's going to work now. Let me just turn it up slightly. Right. Right, now, it does talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm going to do to make life easier for you, because it's a very computerised voice, as you can hear, um, there's a, a useful feature in NVDA that I think is there for debugging where I can actually get a screen up so it actually prints out on the screen what it's saying. So that might help you. So I'm going to get that going now. NVDA menu, preference it, tools, sub view, log V, speech viewer S, accessible accordions, Mozilla Fire, NVDA speech viewer. Right. Accessible viewer and now NVDA. Right, let me move that over there out of the way. Right. Okay. Options. I'll put, I'll put focus here, is a, here is an accessible accordion. Accessible accordions. Mozilla Firefox. Accessible accordions. Document. Heading level one. Accessible accordions. Right. Okay. So, what, we may laugh, but actually, some people rely on this software, and it, 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 it's, the reason it's so verbose is that in a web page, there's a lot going on, um, and so you can see what it's. It's the other thing that's the why it's so verbose is because NVDA, unlike other screen readers, is also used by some people who are dyslexic because as you hover over things, it will tell you what's underneath your mouse pointer. And so if you're dyslexic, you can hover over a paragraph and it will read it to you, which is really useful functionality. Um, you, there's probably a way of turning that off, actually, but I haven't found that yet. Um, so it's told me I'm sitting on, as you can see from the focus flash in there, the heading level one, and it's told me it's a heading level one. Okay, so this is using screen reader and like semantic elements and whatever. So I'm going to press the tab key. This is an off key that's often used with screen readers. Link before accordion group link. Okay, so this focus is now sitting on this one here, and it read out link before accordion group. That's the text of the link, and then it tells me it's a link. So I tab again. Tab control. How do I get your newsletters? Tab collapsed one of three level two. Right, now there's quite a lot going on there. Remember we stuck all that ARIA in there? So this is, this is payback time, right? So it's saying tab control. So it's, I'm in a tab control now, guys. How do I get your newsletters is the text that's on the screen. It's a tab. 
because I put the very necessary role in there. It's collapsed because I told you it was already expanded false. One of three, because there's a list of three of them in there. Level two, it's a level two heading, actually. So, now if I move um, tab again. Can I control the frequency? Tab collapsed two of three, level two. Notice it hasn't repeated that we're in a tab control, because it's kind of the way that screen readers work, it'll only tell you once that you're in some kind of grouping like this. That's true of also when you use a field set in form controls. Um, so you, you're supposed to know that, but you've got a list of like how many there are, really useful information. So, I mean, if I tabbed again, then you would get the same, but now I'm gonna press the enter key. Expanded selected. When you sign up, you can select the frequency of the newsletters. Right. A couple of things that went on there. As soon as I, as soon as I pressed the enter key, it opened the panel, which changed the ARIA attribute, ARIA expanded to true. So now it said expanded. It also changed the ARIA attribute of selected to true also. So it's now telling me it's selected. And then I moved focus onto the panel. And so if you move focus onto the panel, this is a useful thing for screen readers for you to do, single page apps, hybrid apps, and everything like that as well. Put focus on a panel rather than a specific element, and it will start to read out what's in the panel. And so these are quite small panels, these. And so it's just read out what's in there. OK. Now if I tab back to the header. Can I control the frequency? Tab expanded, selected two of three, level two. Now it's still telling me, it's telling me that it's a tab, but it's also saying expanded, selected. And if I press enter. Collapsed. Collapsed. OK. Thank you very much. Oh, that, what about timing for that? For timing, brilliant. So that is the end of my um, uh, demonstration using NVDA. And that is the end of my presentation of how you would do accessible accordions using ARIA. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a really good, uh, really good presentation there. And we're going to take some questions now. So if you have anything to ask, we've got a hand up over here. Accessible Excluding the machine asking questions. <laughs> um, OK, so if we can pass the mic back. Hi, Graham. Thank you very much. Uh, question is, is there any, ever a case where the ARIA selected and ARIA expanded would have different values? I can't think of any reason why that might be the case, because ARIA selected, they're, they're, they're describing two different things, but often things that go in parallel, because the ARIA selected is the element that I'm on at the moment, which is the heading, and the ARIA expanded is referring to the thing that I've said that I control. So it's giving me two parallel pieces of information there. Um, you, I can see it's, it's sort, of, sort of overkill, but this is like kind of like, you know, everything's there, for, uh, the information's there. I've showed you NVDA. Not all screen readers work quite the same. Um, VoiceOver on an iPhone works in a similar way, but not quite the same. I can't demo that because there's no way I can get uh, my, I've got my iPad in there. If anyone wants to see that working in a minute, uh, I can potentially show them that at some point. Um, but it, it, it's, but you know, I can't imagine a situation where they'd ever be out of sync, really. And if you could just, oh, you've got it already. Uh, a couple of things. So, um, with the JavaScripted version you had, you had sort of colours and, and grey bits on it. I, I assume that's just CSS that using is just the CSS, focus yeah. thing. Yes. And then the other thing that you didn't really show, obviously, the JavaScript behind it. So, how do I actually select the elements using the ARIA? Is it the same way I'd select any other attribute, or is there a special sort of way in JavaScript you'd, you'd you know, get the, the ARIA and say, if, if it's selected, then do this? Yeah, are you talking about how I would style that in my CSS? Yeah, so, so that was the first part. But in, yeah. So, how would I, I've presumably got to target in JavaScript which uh, parts are, are open and closed to be able to, to action them, and, yes. and how to do that? What, I, what I've done with, within my jQuery, I'm not sure it's necessarily the right way of doing it, but the way I did it is that I've got like a, for the click, like I, I say, go and find anything within the accordion group, and that's why I've given that a class rather than an ID, because there might be more than one on a page, right? And then find a, an act question in there, right? And then put a click element on that, and then it's got the each in my jQuery. So each one, you, al you allocate, it's, and this is what you need to do if someone clicks this one, right? 
Um, and similarly with the key down. The key down is more complicated because you've got to quiz to see which key was, was, was pressed. Um, but in, in some ways, and then I've got a fun function that I've written which covers both of them that says hide the accordion and it takes in the ID of the one that you want to uh, impact. Because impact. each one will have a unique ID on the page. Um, and that's how I've done it, basically. So it's, I mean, I, I can show you the, the JavaScript if you want, um, a little later or whatever. But in terms of doing the styles, I actually use attribute selectors on the ARIA attributes to help style the thing. Right? Rather than add, adding in extra classes, which I mean you can do if you want, right? But I just use, you know, on the on the headings and, and the pan or the panels, um, I've uh, I've actually tied into the um, aria selected attribute. Um, so that's how I've done it. Does that answer your question? Cool. I've got another question. If you could just pass the mic down. Are any of the aria? values implied, I was particularly thinking... Sorry, you can you start again? I can't sorry. hear you. Are any of the ARIA values implied? I was thinking particularly with, if you've specified role tab list, if you weren't to specify ARIA multi-selectable, would it be interpreted as null or false? Or um, with Boolean attributes, of which the ARIA ones often are, not all of them though, uh, if, you, if the attribute is not there, then the browser and the assistive technology will assume that the value is false. Okay? That is why you've kind of got that double negative with the ARIA hidden one, because obviously ARIA visible would be more sensible in some ways. But, so it's ARIA hidden equals false is like a double negative, but it's because the absence of those Boolean attributes is taken as false. Okay? Did that answer your question? Yes, cool. thanks. Hands up if you have a question. We have one at the front. I'll come in. Grab that. Thank you. Claire. Thanks. Do you have a link to the live demo? Do I what, sorry? Do you have a link to the live demo? I do have a live demo, and um, I will share that on Twitter, because this is running on my machine, but I have, got a, I have got a version of that running up on a research area on my website. So yes, I can post that, and people can pick it apart but to their heart's content. Any more questions? We've got one just behind you. Uh, if you're just getting started with assistive technology, can you recommend any uh, particular one that would be good to start with? Particular uh, assistive technology. So, if you want to start testing your websites, right? Okay. Um, the very first thing that I think you should do, that everybody should do, when they're building a website or or doing a, some sort of website for a client, the very first thing is to make sure that you can tab to everything on the page that needs to get focus, right? And that you can see where focus is, right? That is, if you can get that right, you're like seventy percent of the way there. Sometimes, um, NVDA is free to download. The other one, the industry standard, um, is JAWS, but that's a very expensive piece of kit. Some people say it's slightly better than NVDA, but other people would say they're about the same, right? It, NVDA is free to download. It's an out, open source product, and that's a screen reader. And if you look at, if you do a Google search or whatever search engine you might choose to use on instructions for how to use a screen reader, there are a few websites that will give you all the necessary keystrokes. Because believe me, with a screen reader, there are shed loads of keystrokes. Um, to actually get the thing to do what it wants. I mean, you know, I, I only showed you right, scratch the surface on this stuff, really. Um, so that's a free one you can use. If you've got uh, an iPhone, um, all iPhones and iPads have voiceover built into them. Reco I would recommend that you would test with that. If you look in settings, general accessibility, you will find voiceover. And there's a tutorial in there as well, because believe me, it does radically change how your iPhone works, right? There's the corresponding one in Android called TalkBack, but to be honest, no blind people really use that because it's so bloody flaky, right? And yes, you can quote me on that. And um, so that's why most blind people who have a smartphone, and a lot of them do, will have their, an iPhone, basically. Um, Dragon, naturally speaking, is a great piece of software. Anyway, I actually do use it myself to write reports. If I'm, if I'm doing accessibility testing, I'm, it's useful to actually record stuff rather than writing it down all the time or whatever. Um, that will cost you probably, if you get a professional version or something like that, over 100 quid, just over 100 quid or something like that. Um, screen readers and voice recognition software, totally different things, right? But 
With Dragon, naturally speaking, there's easy ways to use it as long as you mark your stuff up properly. There's very little that's, that's not accessible for Dragon users, but you can make things very hard for them as well, right? So start with NVDA, but also before you even do that, just make sure that you can tab to everything on your website and that it's obvious where you are when you're tabbing on your website. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okie dokie, thank you very much, Graham. That was a really good talk.